In order to understand what a software tester or quality assurance analyst does, you first need to understand the process by which the software is conceptualized, developed, and maintained. This process is known as Software Development Lifecycle, or the SDLC. There are seven key points to understanding the Software Development Lifecycle. Phase 1, Planning. Phase 2, Requirement Analysis. Phase 3, Design. Phase 4, Implementation and Coding. Phase 5, Testing. Phase 6, Deployment. And Phase 7, Maintenance. So it all starts with this guy, the customer. He's the guy that has the business idea for our invoice application and the money to get it started. He's going to reach out to multiple different tech companies until he finds one that he likes. Finally, he's going to meet our company's product owner or our project manager. They are going to discuss terms of their agreement, sign a deal, and accept the project. This will move us into the next phase, planning the requirements. Together, the customer and the product owner will outline the requirements of the application. Let's imagine that the requirements that they've both agreed upon are as follows. 1. User registration. 2. Login. 3. Log out. 4. The dashboard landing page. And so on and so forth. Throughout this course, we'll be running multiple iterations of the SDLC to which new requirements and new features will be added. Now that we have the outlined requirements, let's take them and move on to the requirement analysis phase. Here's our team, operations, developers, product owners, and testers. We'll all meet up in an office for a few hours and define each outlined requirement and give more planning details. Let's start with requirement number one, user registration. We'll need a username input field, a password field, a checkbox to accept the terms and conditions, a submit button, and the ability to save the user into our database. And then we'll move to requirement number two, the login. We'll need a login page to allow returning users to log back into our system. For this, we need another username input field, a password field along with another submit button. From this, we'll need to read the user's information out of the database and log them into our system. Requirement number three will require a logout button, usually located around the same area where the user was logging in from. When they press the logout button, it should clear their session out of the browser to prevent other people from returning and logging back into their account. Finally, requirement number four, the dashboard. This will essentially be the home page of our application. After a new user is registered, they should be redirected to the dashboard. Also, when the user logs in, with the returning account, they should be redirected to the dashboard. For our first SDLC, I will keep the requirements easy. In upcoming videos, we'll dive further in with much harder customer requirements. Once all of the requirements have been analyzed by the team and defined, the product owner will take all the defined requirements and create tickets in a project management system. From here, we'll move into the design phase of the SDLC. The design phase takes all the requirements and starts to plan the product. The design phase may include the business rules, the user interface layouts, color schemes, what programming languages to use, frameworks, system server design, database relationships, architect of the application, mobile aspects, supported browsers, and much more. Next we'll discuss the implementation and the coding of the application. The implementation and coding phase is where everything starts to become fun. The operations team will set up the physical hardware for the servers, the developers will start writing the code, the designers will continue planning the user interface, and the testers will analyze the requirements and start building test cases for their test plans. Even in this stage, testers are incredibly valuable. They start to imagine the usability of the application and see how everything flows together. 
Sometimes while writing test cases, they can discover things don't make sense and help redesign fundamental flaws in the early stages of the application. Next up, we'll be discussing one of the most important phases, which is the testing phase. So why is the testing phase so important? Well, imagine that the developer has finished coding some of our new features and our requirements. We found that when the user logs out, that it's not actually clearing the session in the browser and that another person can walk up to their computer click the login button or click the refresh on the page and they gain access to their account, get access to all of their money and start making payments on various things. It would be a huge and expensive, terrible bug that would get released if we didn't have testers to test these types of things beforehand. So what does a tester actually do during the testing phase? Now that we have the servers all set up and the databases set up, developers have finished coding, they've given us an application an actual website that we can log into now. Now we can start testing and executing the, our test cases from the test plans that we've created, validate that all of the requirements have been met, make sure all the functionality is working as expected, find as many bugs as we possibly can, which could be the color scheme is incorrect or there's a user interface bug somewhere, a critical issue of people not being able to log out, maybe the users can't even register. There's so many mistakes that a developer can make and do make frequently. So as we're testing, we start to find bugs. And what we'll do is we'll report them into a bug tracking system, which is then assigned to a developer. They'll go in and they'll fix the bug, fix the issue, and assign it back to us. This is called a bug lifecycle. You may have noticed that I've mentioned test cases, test plans, and bugs. In the upcoming videos, we'll go into the bug lifecycle iterating with developers and how to write test plans and test cases. Up next we'll talk about the deployment phase. In the deployment phase, the operations team will end up mirroring the staging or development environment systems that we've been testing in and get them ready for production, meaning that they'll install new hardware, brand new servers, have everything scalable for production. This includes setting up the links, setting up the databases for real users, syncing up with the development teams and release managers. Once they've completed all of these tasks, our application will go live to real users. This brings us to the final phase of the SDLC, maintenance. So imagine that we've released and our application became so successful, we're just getting millions of users logging in and registering and using this application. So we need to maintain the servers in the environment. They need to monitor that the load, the stress, everything coming on the servers by so many users logging in and using it, it doesn't bring down the system. Maybe we need to make larger servers, larger databases. Maybe we need to get faster computers. There's a lot of stuff that goes under in the maintenance phase. There will be bugs found in production. It's called production support. Frequently users will email with their issues and you can stop and investigate what they're complaining about or what their issue is, figure it out, write up a bug, get it resolved, and do another deployment to production with issues fixed. So to summarize, we've discussed planning, requirement analysis, design, implementation and coding, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Alright, awesome. That wraps up the video on the SDLC. Uh, one last thing to say is once we're in the maintenance phase, new features will come through, new requirements will come through, and we'll restart the whole process again and be able to get new stuff added into our existing application.